And where we get to go deep on critical issues affecting and concerning the nation. You're watching The Big Story. My name is Sharon Momani. And tonight, the hunt for four men who assaulted former Nairobi Central Business District Chairman Timothy Murioki eight days ago in a Nairobi hotel turned dramatic today after East Africa Legislative Assembly member Simon Bogua denied on camera that he had not been arrested in connection with the incident, only for him to be whisked away by police moments after an exclusive interview with our lead reporter, Sophia Wanuna. Moments later, the police spokesperson, Charles Owino, confirmed that the politician had been arrested and was being used as bait to arrest the four alleged goons, but they failed to show up at a city hotel where Simon Bugwa and Nairobi City Governor uh, Mike Sonko were having lunch. Bugwa told KTN that he knew the men that the police are looking for. Here's his account. So this man? Uh, actually, these men, they are known. They are known. They are people who uh, are brokers, are political brokers. And everybody knows, knows uh, everybody know uh, these people because they hang uh, over City Hall. And I'm a Nairobi politician. So you personally know them? Uh, not personally knowing them, but I know them. All right. So then why do you think it's becoming so difficult to arrest them? The police have even put out a bounty for those who have information on when, how they can be captured. But yet we see them continuing with their business. Uh, actually, it is up now to the police to explain that because uh, uh, that is their job to arrest uh, the, the culprits and uh, take them to court as, uh, as uh, the law uh, states. Yeah. yeah. So you'd say if the police came around City Hall, they'd find them there because they're told they hang around there quite a bit. It was in the media reports yesterday that uh, they hung around City Hall. And uh, even during Kidero's time, they were there. Uh, during the previous, uh, during Kisia's time, they were there. There are people who hang around City Hall. Uh, and basically, they are political brokers. You'll see them in all functions uh, for politicians. So uh, basically, they are people who can be found. So the police refusing to find them are what, part of this? Well, uh, I wouldn't say that. Uh, uh, you, you see, the police, they take uh, time to investigate and to actually but get them. But in this case, there's li they are caught live on camera committing yes. the crime. So it's not an allegation. We are seeing their faces. We are hearing what they have to say. Yes. Not much of investigation. They just need to get them, don't they? Yeah. For, for, me, for me, I'm uh, very clear on this. It, uh, and what I'd say is that uh, the police, they should do their work. They should uh, uh, arrest these people and bring them to book. Yeah. Is yeah. there anything else the police wanted to find out from you when they interrogated you earlier? Oh, well, uh, there's nothing that they wanted. They just wanted to know why I, ha I have been mentioned. But uh, since the governor is a very close uh, friend of mine, I think uh, that is the reason. So uh, basically, they just wanted to know if I'm connected in any way, of which I denied. Right. Yes. So have, are you meant to talk to them again after this? Well, the police? Well, I don't know because I explained myself and uh, I was told uh, they, they, they are looking for those people. And I was asked if uh, I have any number for uh, those guys and I told them that I don't have any number. And uh, if they want them, they can go to City Hall. That is where they'll find them. Okay. Well, after that, moments later, uh, Sophia, uh, my colleague Sophia Wanuna spoke with the police spokesperson, Charles Owino, who negated Mbugwa's account of events, confirming that he had been arrested and remains in police custody. Listen in. So earlier today, we saw reports from a section of the media that Simon Bugwa, the Yala MP, had been arrested uh, in connection with the four goons that we saw assault, the ex-NCBDA boss was he arrested because later when I was with him, he inter I interviewed him and he said, yes, he gave a statement. After our interview, he was whisked away. Please give us a status update. Yeah, it's true. He was arrested. And uh, when he was arrested, uh, he requested to be allowed to sit in a place in an hotel. That's in the morning? Yes. Mm -hmm. To be allowed to sit in a place in an hotel within our vicinity and uh, our officers were able to monitor him and see what he was doing for the purpose of uh, uh, getting the rest, uh, some of uh, the people who had been uh, accused of the same. And that was done on his request. So let me get this straight to clarify for our viewers. You got him in the morning. Under interrogation, he offered to go to a restaurant and call the individuals that assaulted Mr. Murioki. And wait for them. 
and wait for them there. He got to that hotel. When I called him, he was at the hotel. I found him there with the Nairobi governor. So these individuals did not show up. And while I was interviewing the Nairobi governor, you then whisked him away. So where is he now? He's with the police. What is the intention? Now that he did not, according to you, fulfill his end of the bargain, what now? The issue is not feeling end of bargain. There was no bargain to it. The, the, the thing is you that... You accepted his request to go yes, bring Yes, because them. it was important for us okay. to have all of them. And he said uh, he was with them. He was waiting for them to come. So we only felt it was proper to be decent and allow him to wait for them, so that we could have him. So uh, when, they, when they were not coming and it was getting late, uh, we decided to take him to the right place. Is he being charged? If so, with what? Uh, definitely he will be charged. With what? With what you are sorting him for. The allegation we've heard is that he's the one who released or sanctioned this man to attack Mr. Morioki. Is that the charge you're also investigating? It's not proper for me to discuss evidence and uh, facts that will be discussed in court. Okay. It's not appropriate. I don't think that is right. There was outrage when this incident happened that broad daylight, media were there assaulting Mr. Morioki, threatening to push him into the swimming pool. And many are like, how is this happening in Nairobi, in Kenya, in broad daylight? What do you tell people? Uh, it's impunity uh, uh, that m many of us uh, try to uh, express every time, everywhere. So uh, those are some of the uh, implications of impunity in society when uh, they come up and uh, a kind of society or the people tend to entertain it. Have in, has anyone come out to offer information on this man because the police have said they'll give money to anyone who gives any information that could lead to their arrest? The men are known. Uh, I don't think uh, uh, we need much information. We'll arrest them. Why is it taking so long? This incident happened on the 30th. There are pictures now on social media purportedly of the men in a wedding uh, with the governor uh, Nairobi County. So they appear to be everywhere. In fact, in the interview, Mr. Mbugwa said they are known in City Hall. They are always there. Yes. So the police appear to not be aggressively going after these individuals. We are simply decent in the way we do our things, and we have to do them within the law. Mm -hmm. Even if you've made a mistake, uh, we have to, to, to look for you uh, in a decent way. So, and that is why when Mr. They Mugwa didn't was... They treat Mr. Morioki decently, so this is decent. No, that, is, that, is, that is up to them. The fact that your husband beats you today does not mean we will manhandle him. We have just to handle him in the normal way. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's not uh, prudent that if somebody has mishandled people, then we also mishandle them. I don't think that's appropriate. Right, and so Sophia also spoke exclusively with the Nairobi City County Governor Mike Sonko on the matter. And like Mbogwa, he admitted knowing the men but denied that they worked for him or that he sent them to assault Mr. Morioki. But before we even get to hear from Sonko, let me tell you who else is on the show tonight with me. I have former Nairobi Mayor Joa Ketch and Nairobi City County Assembly Minority Leader Peter M. Watok and the man himself at the heart of the matter, Timothy Morioki. Let me just get Get Mr. Morioki's reaction of this both accounts of uh, Simon Bogua and police spokesman. It would appear that it's actually very easy for a camel at this point to get through the eye of a needle than for goons whose faces have been splashed on national TV to be arrested. What is your reaction to these accounts, Mr. Morioki? Uh, first of all, I want to say that uh, uh, up to now I'm quite confused because I, I do not understand why. Uh, somebody could just come and assault you in front of cameras, feeling nothing will happen, want to throw you into a pool, uh, proceed to slam you onto the tarmac, and at a moment, Sharon, I, I felt now these guys were going to kill me. I'm still very confused why and how this happened. Mm -hmm. But that notwithstanding, uh, I just thank God that I'm alive. Right. Uh, uh, it's a horrific uh, incident. All I can say is that police uh, must do their work. They have told us they're doing their work. If somebody was found in the scene, I am aware that media took full videos of this uh, incident. Everybody who was in the scene was uh, recorded. And, and therefore, the, without a shadow of doubt, these people must face the law. And let me repeat also, this should be 
a lesson to any other person who behaves like that. Right. And later on, I'd want us to speak a little bit, Mr. Morioki, about what you really didn't get to talk about the press conference that you'd call for, because you actually said that you were there to defend the governor. But we shall be listening to his account of the entire issue in a bit, and I shall also be engaging uh, you and my other two guests further on this matter. But now let's listen to Mike Sonko's account. In this interview, the governor also defended his failure to restore the city to its former glory, instead accusing his predecessor of leaving behind too many deaths. Here's that exclusive interview. I'm now joined by Nairobi Governor, His Excellency Mike Sonko. Thank you so much for making time for us. You, so your name has been adversely mentioned in as far as the incidents, uh, the assaults on the ex-NCBDA boss, Mr. Morioki. The men, while assaulting him on camera, said they were acting on your behalf. What do you say to that? Uh, first, I can say... Here, say evidence is not admissible in law, and I don't allow anybody to tarnish uh, my good name. What I can say, Morek is my good friend. I've never had any differences uh, with him, and I remember on that material day I was unwell. I was at home, so I have nothing to do with that uh, uh, case. Whatever happened, I was not a party to it, and I've called for the arrest of these uh, uh, boys who are known. So I cannot say that I took part in. I, I, I totally disagree with that. Yeah. You were at a wedding, there are pictures online with them last Saturday. Yes. You say you're calling for the arrest, you were in the same place with but, them. You but, have officers guarding yes, you. Yes. Couldn't you then no, do... But that, that wedding was uh, before the incident happened. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm the governor of this great city. I can even attend, I can even come to your wedding or to his wedding. So, Hapo, I don't think if there is any. It anything, wasn't no, last Saturday. No, it wasn't last Saturday. It was even before before this incident uh, happened. In fact, I remember I had I attended uh, I had two weddings on that day. I mean, I attended uh, uh, two weddings on that day. One wedding was a Barana wedding in uh, Runda. Then this wedding was uh, it, one of my friends uh, was marrying um, uh, Nick Salat's daughter. So I, I, I attended to that wedding. I can confirm to that. I can't deny that. So, so then you know them very well, Governor, and you know their goings on, their dealings. You, of all the people, <laughs> the most powerful man in Nairobi County, should be able to see to it that they are arrested, they are apprehended. But you see, that was uh, before. I remember there was a time this Al-Shabaab suspect who I think uh, was mentioned in the Garissa incident. There was a time he took some pictures with me like four or five years ago. Then later on, we, 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 we saw him that uh, he was in the Garissa Al-Shabaab attack and I didn't know whether he's a bad person or he's a, go he's a good person. So that wedding was uh, like five, five, five uh, weeks ago before even the incident happened. But now that the incident has happened, you've seen what they did, you know them. Is there but nothing not, Governor Sonko I, I, can do? I don't have prosecutorial powers. I cannot, I'm not a police officer. I'm not an investigator. Everyone there says no they're at City Hall, that they're always found there. City Hall is a public office. Even you can come there and I welcome you. So you're unable to do anything to help let, the police let, let apprehend the police do them? Their they are paid. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. They are mandated by the Constitution to, to, to maintain law and order. Let them go arrest them. There's also are saying the police cannot act on this because of the political intrigues and influence behind it, that they are very well-connected people, the police wouldn't touch them. I'm not aware about that, which political intrigues we are talking about, and the campaign period are over. It's time to focus on service delivery. Mm -hmm. I'm not aware whether it's, it's political. What I know, I'm the governor of Nairobi. Everybody has uh, his or her work to do. Let the police do their work. The investigators do their work. I do my work. So why do you think it's taking so long, finally, on that, to arrest these individuals? There's a bounty for each out of I them. I think you can put that question to the inspector general of police or the director of CID. He's in a better position to answer you why they have not been arrested up to now. Me ask me about service delivery, why I have not fixed the roads, why I have not fixed the drainage, and, and I've got, and let's and talk I've got about very that. good answers on that. Let's talk about that, because right now it's yes. been heavy, raining heavily. Yes. Potholes are almost like craters yes. on Nairobi roads. Yes. The flooding, the drainage still has not been fixed, yes. system in the country. Yes. We have traffic choking yes. and taking away a lot of the money. Yes. The garbage heaping yes. and, again, the yes. filth. Yes. There's so much I could go on and on. Yeah. Many Nairobians feel that you are disappointing them. I'm not disappointing Nairobians, and I want to repeat myself, and I've been saying this all the time, that we inherited dead systems. Uh, the, the government we inherited uh, uh, was a dead government, or is a dead government. What I can say, uh, the law is very clear, that for you to, 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 to spend 
any any kind of budget for you to procure any sort of uh, contracts to get contractors to go to do roads or to do drainage you have to follow uh, uh, the law sophie if i can tell you our first budget will start on uh, june maybe uh, after the the, 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 the this uh, uh, last quarter of the uh, previous financial year and why i'm saying we inherited debt systems the roads we are talking about here were supposed to have been fixed four or five years ago. Because my predecessor had a budget during the first financial year of 2.3 billion for doing roads. The second financial year, he had a budget of 3 billion doing roads. He had another budget of 4 billion. He had another budget of 2.75 billion for doing roads. But we've uh, uh, checked on the ground, there is nothing that was done by my predecessor's administration. So this blame cannot be put on me. Even some of this. Uh, so when do we start seeing action on your part? What I've done, the, the last quarter we found in the office, uh, after perusing our uh, financial position, there was a last quarter meant for the year 2016-2017. Uh, 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 we committed these funds to the, to the current uh, roads you are seeing, for instance, the Donum Road, the Maji Mazuri uh, Road, the Mama Wahoo Road. The, there are so many roads which we've done. The Falcon Road, these roads were approved since that time. But you see, the money is for these roads, zilishia kwa mifuko ya watu. Hazi kwenda kwa development. And, I, and that's why I was very furious the day Kidero came to Senate. I even... We, even, we almost went physical because of these uh, uh, problems we are, so you're accusing, we are, we are facing uh, uh, today. Yes. You're accusing Kidero because for me, uh, misappropriation I'll, I'll, of yeah, funds? I'll be judged after June once I receive my, my proper uh, budget for development. But, uh, you know, here, here there are some achievements which, uh, as the governor, which uh, I've done. For instance, during my predecessor's time, the money for development used to go for recurrent exp uh, expenditure. He used to, use, to, to, to pay salaries uh, using uh, uh, funds meant for development. Myself, I have kept corruption. And, I've, and I want to repeat it again. Corruption is the main factor that has been hindering development in this great city of ours. Mm. I've fixed that. We are not spending money at source. We are doing, uh, in terms of revenue collection, a day between 50 to 100 million a day. My predecessor used to do 7 to 10 million a day, okay. and he never used to even to account for this money. So for instance, January, we did 1.6 billion, mm -hmm. something which has never been, done, been seen in the history of Nairobi. February, we did 1.4 billion. March, 1.5 billion. Uh, April, we've done a billion. So and this is a clear indication, Sophie, right. that money is meant for development. All the allocation which will come from the national government through the checker will go to development. So you're telling us, Governor, and someone watching at home, an Nairobian will ask this. You're yes. collecting the money, so it's not a problem. You're paying yes. the salaries, yes. it's not a problem. Yes. But where is this money going to? And these people that are being paid these salaries, what are they doing? Because the people at the grassroots in Nairobi no. are not feeling it. I want to answer that question. Uh, recently, we activated all our sub-county uh, structures all the county government structures, all the word admin structures, all my CSS. I summoned them and I told them, listen, here are the tools, let's go to the ground. You are, 50, you are, you are almost 14,000. We pay you a salary of over a billion a month. Let us go to the ground, let us clean our city, let us uh, combine our forces and deliver uh, services to the great people of Nairobi. We should forget about these blame games because at a, I remember uh, when the president took over in 2013, he had so many challenges. Mamba and security alikuwa napigwa huko. Mara al-Shabab wamepiga mpeketoni. Mara al-Shabab wamepiga Westgate. Mara wanatajua corruption. But after one year, everything was fixed. Yes, you cannot... Zam Toto just now, then Utaki Atembe, Bila Kufata, the the ISO procedures and stages. On the congestion, so, you yes. said Matatus out of CBD. Yes. In 30 days, you yes. extended that timeline. However, yes. they fought back, and yes. now it's back to business yeah. as yes. usual. Yes. Even you as governor is unable to yeah. deal with this. What yeah. hope do Nairobians no, no, have? We have, we have? We are engaging all the, 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 the Matatu operators, uh, all the hawkers, all the border border operators. We are going to benchmark, uh, we are going to Rwanda uh, next month. Even hawkers waangalie why uh, Kigali or uh, Rwanda is ranked as the cleanest uh, country, or Kigali is ranked as the 
uh, cleanest uh, city in Africa. Mm. Is that necessary? Do you need yeah, to spend all that it, it, money it, it, taking it, it, all of these individuals? You're still going to spend a lot of money on this benchmarking trip. It's something you could come, introduce yeah. policy, and it's enacted. Do you need to take a whole yes. entourage? Yes, no, there is a lot of also political interference. Even the other day when I was moving Boda Boda, somebody went to court to block that. But I think the judiciary, we won the case. The application was dismissed against us. Uh, even on hawkers, somebody has gone to court to block that. Even Matatu operators, they went to court just two days ago to block us from... So these uh, blame games, we must stop them. We must just come together, border border operators themselves, Nairobians themselves. We must agree that Nairobi is one of the major cities in the world. It is an international city. We need to work together and deliver services. We need to make our city the cleanest city in Africa. Uh, uh, it was recently ranked as the third uh, tourist uh, destination, as a commercial uh, destination. So we should very, be very serious when we talk about Nairobi. It is, it is a very unique county. Yeah. I know you need to go. There's a team that has been formed, Regeneration of Nairobi, yes, yeah. National Government and yeah. County Government. Yeah. There are those who argue this is an indictment on your leadership, that no. you're being given support because the National Government feels left to you, it will not happen. No. I want to repeat myself that Nairobi is an international city. Yeah. It is the capital city of Kenya. All the dignitaries, the embassies are in Nairobi uh, city, county. And I want to appreciate the president in a very big way. The, 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 the cooperation on the regeneration of Nairobi, the, pro, the partnership between Nairobi City County and, uh, and, and uh, the national government, we really appreciate it, we welcome it, and I'm going to work closely with my, my president, and I want to appreciate him in a very big way on the support he's giving me. Because here, Nairobi, it is the capital city of Kenya. We are seeing the mess which is there. Sonko is not the cause of this mess. We found this mess when I was sworn in as the governor. Here I have a president, a very considerate president, who wouldn't like to see Nairobi Kikofa. Then the president and Mekuja support us. The president, we, we, we are ready to partner. When will Nairobi have government. a deputy you, governor? And let me tell you something about these roads which you've mentioned. Yes. These roads are not under Nairobi City County. For instance, Moy Avenue, Accra Road, Riverside Drive, uh, Tomboya uh, Streets. Uh, Taveta Road, uh, Mujika Sarani Road, all these major roads are under Kura. As we only do the feeder roads uh, within the. So there needs to the, be a streamlining. The public perception, which is there, is that Senko has failed, Nairobi City County has failed. These are not roads which are under Nairobi City County, but since we are serving the same government, we want to come together with Kura under various partnership uh, programs and agree. As as a county, we do these roads. Kura, we do these roads. Okay. So that's why we are coming under, 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 under various partnership programs together with these agencies like yeah. Kura, Kera, Kenha. I know you must go. When will Nairobians have a deputy governor? Mm, that is a story for another day. Why is Let it us, taking so long? Um, I'll, I'll answer you that on another day. Yeah? Yeah, but uh, we'll soon have a deputy governor. Okay. Yes. Final. Your wife, the first lady of Nairobi, yeah. has taken up G Narisha Gigi. Yes. Again, that looks like an indictment on your failure to mm. clean up the garbage that mm. is choking Nairobi. No, even in Kiambu, Waitito's wife collects uh, garbage. Is helping, but let's uh, talk about Nairobi. That, that is an initiative. The first lady wants to do it by herself. But for instance, as the county government? For instance, she's doing uh, this uh, street chief families uh, issue. She's taken over that. She's doing the distribution of sanitary towers to uh, schools, and she's taken that Narisha uh, Gigi Mtani. And uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, I'm a volunteer for Fanyayo. The county is not paying her. Uh, there is some call rescue team. She has uh, uh, so many organizations. And yeah. yeah. So the county has not failed because we are not no, seeing no, no, progress. The the, no, no, no. There is a lot of uh, progress still under the same. We've inherited dead systems. I was not the governor five years ago. We have already done an expression of uh, interest. We are partnering with various investors on, uh, on garbage collection. Right now, uh, the garbage collectors' contracts have expired and we don't want to renew them mm -hmm. unless we want to get back to the problem which was there. Yeah. But what we are doing, we have devolved garbage collection. It, is, it has gone down to the, to the ward level. Yes. Yeah, the ward managers, the sub-county administrators, my ministers, our staff are all going to be mandated by this, uh, uh, by Imambia collect garbage. They'll be collecting garbage, then the county tax will 
be taking garbage to the Dandora dump site. All right, so that is that exclusive interview that our lead reporter, Sophia Wanuna, had earlier today with Nairobi County Governor Mike Sonko. And he really addresses a lot of what I see you are tweeting me about the concerns that you have about uh, Nairobi City, from traffic to congestion uh, to sanitation issue, and that all-important matter of security, which is what I want us to come back and start by discussing with my panelists tonight. I shall reintroduce them. I have uh, former Nairobi Mayor Joe uh, Catch. I also have Nairobi County Assembly Minority Leader uh, Peter M. Watok, and I also have uh, Timothy Muriuki, who is the former chairman of the Nairobi City County um, Central Business District Association, rather. So we want to get into that conversation, but first we take a short break here on the big story. Don't go too far.